and welcome, welcome to Heart Centered Conversations, the podcast where myself, Jane McDowell, talk to my wonderful guests about books that have inspired them, shifted their perception, and helped them do fantastic things in the world. And I am so excited and delighted to have back my wonderful friend, Hayley Foster. Yay! Hayley, tell us which book have you brought to the conversation today? Well, I, I I actually have two that I want to give a mention to. Greedy, greedy. Okay. I know. I know. Well, look at look at look at me, <laughs> the lady that didn't used to read books. I know. <laughs> now Fantastic. I've got two on the go. <laughs> So which one are you going to start off with then? I'm going to talk about this one, not that you'll see it around the right way, but um, it's called Untangled. It's guiding teenage girls through the seven transitions into adulthood by Lisa Damour. Um, I got this for two reasons. It's because I want to help my niece. Um, She's turning 13 at the end of the month. and wonderful. Yeah, and she's had those. T- well, she's had those teenage hormones for quite some time, actually. <laughs> and I, there's been a real, a noticeable change in the way she communicates, and I wanted to kind of understand it better. So that's one of the reasons I started reading that book. And also, I've got this real, I don't know. There's this, this entire eternal drive, passion to help younger women understand themselves better so that they can go out there in the world and be a a force for good you know hold the flag high for the powerful for powerful women and start making change and being the change leaders yeah in our world so that's that's why I'm kind of exploring that more now because I know you've had this dream for a while, haven't you, Hayley? Yeah, but yeah. I remember talking to you about it a few years ago and you were like, this is what I want to do. And Yeah. 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 So I, rem- I remember experiencing, so you'll remember, Jane, and, and most women will, I'm sure, will remember those early years going from um, education into the workspace and how, I don't know, how I felt quite small, I felt, like um i was raised raised in a very um patriarchal environment and i and i i just sucked that up like a sponge and kept myself small and quiet and didn't make noise do you know what i mean in and just did as i was told uh whether it was the right thing for me or not yeah. and and i and there was there were so many different things or experiences where I felt quite crushed. Um, and I would like to be able to help younger women have the tools to be able to be their true and authentic selves while they're exploring who that is and not allow those first few years in the workspace to crush them, but help build them up and raise them into who whatever fabulous women they're going to be like in their lives right because none of us need to wait until we're here in our 40s and uh, 40s and 50s to discover how fabulous we are yeah it's a good point and um interesting what you said about how you came into the workplace and you had sort of quite a patriarchal kind of yeah upbringing cuz yeah when i think when i reflect on my growing up I mean, obviously, mm. the society as a whole is quite patriarchal. Still is, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But actually, my mum was is a, a really fierce woman in a lot of ways, and and I and I I was I was listening to something the other day. Oh yeah, I was um, reading the Authority Gap. Um, mm-hmm. I will put the name of the author in because it's just popped out of my head completely. I'll put it in the notes. And it's so interesting that in that book, she talks about how we are often, when we grow up in in our homes, that we grow up in this kind of patriarchal, you know, Mm. whatever your dad says is what is the final word. And that was Mm. so not the case in my house. (laughs) And my mum was always like the the driving force and she was always the one who had the last say, even though sometimes she might sort of pander to, well, you know, you've done this and I'm cross with you and you wait till your dad gets home and I'm not, you know, 
I'm going to tell yeah. you. And then yeah, what yeah. would always happen, she'd say, she'd say, George, Jane did blah, 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 blah. Uh, and <laughs> and he'd say, oh, and how was your day, Jamie? You know, you know he just <laughs> didn't step into that, yeah. that yeah. role with me and my sister. I think he did a lot more with my brothers. But, yeah, so I had mm. a very different upbringing. And then, and also I went to an all-girls school, a convent. So, you know, double. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so when I went out to the workplace, it it felt like I'd been thrown into into the lion's den because it was just like yeah. having to deal with men and living under the mm. male gaze and just yeah. you know that was to me like whoa, really yeah. quite um, a culture shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. and and so we're two very different ends of the scale then to be honest yeah. but and at that time of moving into the world we both could have benefited from some some tools to help us yes. like navigate that right yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. Yeah. because for me being um being a strong woman or being seen back then or being seen as a feminist was not a positive thing. Oh it no! Was at that seen point, feminists were someone. Thing. Yeah, they were someone with hairy armpits who ate lentils. That was kind of yeah, you know, was, and they that, were that and the, they were scary. Kind of comic, <laughs> the, yeah, the comic kind of persona that was uh, thrown yeah. onto onto yeah feminists at the time. And yeah, weird because my mum, I view her very much as a feminist, but she would never. Mm say she's a feminist she'd never studied feminism she'd never yeah. looked at different schools of thought within feminism first wave second wave whichever wave mm. um but I but I, because she is someone who has always stood up for herself she doesn't take mm. crap from any man at all I've always seen her as like a really fierce woman <laughs> but I also tried everything in my power to not be anything like her because she scared me yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and I thought she was highly unreasonable. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but then like there's this this paradox, right? Where all those women that have gone before us who have been those really strong feminists have done wonderful things for us, you yeah. know? And we're where we are now because of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and I I feel that there needs to be another another kind of jump, another drive. Yeah. To but it needs to be something very different. See, soft women with soft energy um historically hasn't been seen as a good thing. However, if you embrace your true self, you cover strength and wisdom and soft and nurturing and all these these lovely words and ways to be and we are the whole package rather than just being like the warrioress and just fighting our cause you know yeah because that's so exhausting isn't it you know yeah, this is... to be like that it's yeah. um who wants to fight all the time yeah right? I mean it's... you know there's sometimes you need to but really mm. you know this kind of how I work with my clients is about you know being unashamedly yourself yeah. and that yeah. includes you know embracing all those softer characteristics that women yeah. have we don't all have yeah. them you know and 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 for that to be acceptable to other yeah. people without yeah. us seeming to be less than yes and I, and the thing is about edu obviously about education and you know I'm I feel very strongly about awareness Right, yeah. everybody. Awareness is really important because when you have awareness of what's going on, then change can happen. Um, you can choose change, and I think, um, yeah, I think there needs to be another drive in pushing the cause of strong, capable women who are comfortable with their soft energy to 
to make the change in the world that needs to happen. We need more female leaders. We need more female bosses. We need more female politicians. We need more female world leaders. Yes, please. Uh, to, to create a true balance of energy mm. out there. Because yeah. that's when we work best is when there's a balance of energy. You can you can follow it with um, the way things change with Disney films, Disney characters, because previously it was all male leads and yeah. it was the woman who needed to be re rescued and yeah. taken care of. Now it's turned to strong female leads who yeah. don't need the chaps, right? They can do it all on their own. But the next move needs to be into a balanced partnership, in my opinion. Yeah, for, because for, the, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's really interesting well, that this um, notion that Disney had that you know women were strong and they didn't need help from anybody. Well, we all need help from somebody at some point. So, like you say, the balance is yeah. kind of out of whack yeah. with the stories. And um, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. There's been a few. There's been a few parents that have commented that I know. I don't really watch Disney films, so I haven't got a clue. But um, but they've yeah. commented that they think that the pendulum has swung too far the other way. Yes. And what part of me thinks, yeah. ha ha, see how you like it. <laughs> yeah. And then the other part <laughs> of me thinks, yeah, yeah there has to be a balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a, this is a yeah. Blah, 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 got me words muddled there. Yeah, it's it's that partner partnership element that's going to lead us to where we need to be. Um. The Dalai Lama said, and I'm going to paraphrase a bit, I think, okay. um, said you. that, thank you very much, mm -hmm. um, said that the world will be saved by the Western woman. Oh. Right? Yeah. Uh, but I reckon it's, and somebody else said this to me, and I'll share that with you in a second. Um, she said she believes it will be the world will be saved by resourced Western women and res being resourced she doesn't mean necessarily financially or it's more about really knowing their true authentic selves knowing how they can best serve other people and make good and make good things happen in the world mm. so they have the belief they have the dream and they don't sit with that, with just that. They actually make things happen. That's mm. that kind of resource. And it's when women come together in collaboration is when they are their strongest. So, so I'm um, my, what's coming up for me when you said that is why, why yeah. is it Western women? What, you know, what? what I, th I think it's just because of thinking behind that. I, I, I wouldn't know, and I'm going to make an assumption because who knows what this funny little man thinks. <laughs> Bless him. Um, but I do think that he's thinking that it will be more resource, more educated women that will be able to support. So he's classed that and lumped us together as Western women. Mm. So. Yeah, I'm... Um... I'm struggling with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, so, yeah. again, it's a pa – even though he's the Dalai Lama, it's a pa – it's coming from a patriarchal place, if you like. So they're labelling and categorising and deciding who is going to help. Yeah. I mean, there's loads of fabulously educated women all over the world. I don't mm. – yeah, so mm. – yeah, yeah. So just, it could, should just be women, right? Women unless, unless it was because it came to him in a dream or something, and that's Possibly. what he said. It. I don't know, but uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, something to dwell on. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> listener it's... viewer, if you have an opinion, then do pop yeah, it comments. please make yeah. a comment. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a fabulous subject. It really like it's one of the ones that I get quite quite serious about. Because you know me, I do like a bit of a jape when yeah. I'm talking about things. I do get very serious about it, about this and the way. Um, I, d I think that comes from a space of having experienced, yeah, just having experienced feeling small for so long. And 
like I never entered into the personal development kind of realm yeah. until I until I hit my late forties, early fifties. Yeah. So you could say last six, seven years that I've actually yeah. been exploring this this kind of thing. Well, uh, I think the first time we were ever in a room together mm. um, with the great Chris and Karine Lambert Gorman. Yes. Um, I seem to remember you got up and you you did one of the mindset exercises that they talk us through and mm. you just kind of like you were like rabbit in headlights like what the hell am I doing here or right, I give it a go and, and yeah. it was just so alien to you as it was yeah. to me then as well um, yeah but, and and now look at where you are now amazing <laughs> I yeah 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 I I see myself as a completely different I am gonna say keep completely different person but I actually genuinely believe I'm the true authentic version of myself now yeah, because yeah, of the work exactly. that I have done I mean a really simple example is that I until I started doing this kind of work I never really knew what my favorite color was I mm. adopted whatever was popular whatever was um whatever would make me fit in yeah, so we true... all want to be part of yeah. the herd, don't we? We don't yeah, want to exactly. be separated. It's a safe exactly. place. A true, yeah. a true people pleaser. Yeah. So you know, so um, yeah, and and so that's a really small thing, but I think knowing now, having boundaries, knowing what my values are, knowing what I will and won't do, what I will and won't accept, um. Yeah, it feels great. It yeah. it really makes me feel like a a whole person who is in 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 charge and in control of my life and how I live it. That's, yeah, that's it. And yeah. and if I may say, you mm. seem so much happier now, even mm. when you're going through times that are challenging. Yes, you're so much more able to share what's going on and mm -hmm. and speak your mind and allow yourself to feel the feels whereas yes. before I feel like you were very closed yeah very guarded up, you know penting you know yeah. holding things in and yeah. yeah 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 because I didn't I didn't necessarily value my own feelings yeah that um that I would hide them and again that came comes from like experiences as a child yeah We're, so our we create our own filters for life Something happens, it may be completely innocuous, but it happens to us and we associate a meaning to that, which then creates a filter for life. And then something happens, something else happens and we associate meaning with that. And then there's another filter and it carries on and carries on. So, um, but again, the awareness of that, being able to look at those things and think, oh, that's where it's coming from enables you to then make positive change yeah absolutely and one uh, just um to be able to enjoy the small things and get real joy from it is fantastic yeah because i would say pr prior to the work that i've done i would have been looking for external external validation and external things yeah. to make life feel more positive yeah you know so then so you're on a mission to help younger women mm. open up way before they get to yeah the age yeah. that you and I did before we yeah. start to do anything about it yeah I think yeah, yeah I think so and yeah. so the, so the other book I was going to share with you is and this is it so I've done some work with Dr Joanna Martin yeah um i did some training with them i've learned all about it. and it's all about uh it's women women coming together and being their best selves basically and she teaches the tools to enable you to do that which is phenomenal but she's just so she's celebrating 10 years of one of many which is the group if you like um uh, the coven i like to call it <laughs> They're fabulous women. Um, and 
uh she said 10 year we've just had the 10 year conference and she's launched her book this year as a celebration of everything that she's created yeah and it's called superwoman escaping the myth by dr joanna martin and it's got a lot of her teachings in there the explanation this will give you the understanding and the awareness of where um of how we created all those filters for life. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and some suggestions for helping you identify better ways of doing things. And as I said to you before we got on here, this is my now. I believe everybody should read um, The Inner Critic uh, by Hedra. Oh, I can't think of their name. We've reviewed it. Anyway, before, we reviewed we it the here? last yeah. one. That was the first one we did. I think everybody should read that. And now I believe every woman should have a copy of this book. I think. Well, uh, this one's more up to date than the other one you talked yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 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 and, and more in keeping in uh, freeing women up from their belief, yeah. their patriarchal um, their chains. Backles. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and St so Steve, my husband, he, um, he obviously has really noticed the change in me and the I difference bet, yeah. in what I'm doing. And he absolutely loves it. He thinks this is good. So when I sell him, I'm going off to do something with the coven. <laughs> There's no question about it. He just loves the way I come back. I yeah. come back with some new awareness and some new way of being. And it's um yeah it's a uh, it's a fantastic book I think everybody yeah. can read it yeah well that's the thing isn't it if everyone can be who they really are yeah then everybody benefits everyone absolutely around them. absolutely yeah and it's um it's the way it's the way we're going to create balance and the thing is if the ladies of our age group are doing this work now we can pass it down and influence the younger generation who will then pass it down and influence the younger generation and so on and so forth. Um, I do think that, um, so I am going to do some work with a friend of mine who's also trained here. We're, we're looking to create something where we do an educational piece for male leaders in the corporate arena so that they can better understand their female teams and things like that yeah. so because both she and i come from a manufacturing background well pharmaceutical manufacturing actually so and we've experienced being led by uh challenging chaps shall we say yeah you know i think that all women in the workplace have more or less unless you're very lucky yeah. You know, yeah. stepped into a role where you've got loads of women leaders in the business. Yeah, or or chaps who are um, actually very mindful and open. Oh yeah. To, so let's be let's women. be very so, fair. There are lots yeah. of men because who I've experienced. Are I, <laughs> I would <laughs> say I, yeah yeah. Out of all the years that I have, I have worked. I've been working since I'm six, was sixteen. I'm fifty six now. Um. I have experienced three male bosses, leaders, who I would say really understood the people that worked for them, regardless of whether they were male yeah, or female. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but that's considering like the amount of people that I've worked for, yeah. because I worked for 16 years for the pharmaceutical company, but I went into different departments. Yeah. So they were always different leaders and stuff. So that's quite quite shoddy from a leader point of view. Yeah. That that not more leaders, regardless of whether they're male or female, actually understand how to get the best out of their teams. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I say, and there's women out there who embody the superwoman energy. They're trying to basically out outman the men. And right, so historic, yes. historically, women who got on in the workplace were either ball busters or sex kittens, you know, mm. and and that's how they did it. 
um we need we need a different energy <laughs> definitely and you know i i have worked for uh people so you know some of whom i was telling a friend of mine yesterday that um one of the people i worked for who was a man mm. would say things to me like Oh, don't worry, Jane, that's a typical female reaction to have. And I got to the point where I was walking into work and imagining stabbing him with <laughs> a letter opener. And I thought to myself, yeah, that this is not how I can live my life. So I just gave my notice when I got into work. I just, I just yeah. have to leave. And then I've also worked for a woman who was probably the most unpleasant person I've ever had to work for. Mm. And no one has made me cry and feel as miserable as she did. Yeah, it's awful. She, yeah, awful. And that and that kind of feeds into the idea of witch wounds as well. Yeah, yeah. About you know how how we still continue to suffer mm -hmm. because of the patriarchal view of women, and it's and it's often yeah perpetuated by other women, which is. Yeah. Really unfortunate um yeah. yeah so so it's it's not it's not like a let's let's like be down on all yeah, men and yeah, they're all yeah. awful because no, it's not the case no, at all no, no. No. i'm married to one yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're all all right at yeah. some point yeah right? yeah yeah it's it's just trying to make just trying to make life more pleasant for everybody yeah right it doesn't have to be as hard as it appears to be yeah because people the a lot of the issue is people are pushed into leadership roles who haven't had any experience in managing people and getting the best out of people mm. so um and again that just comes from that oh just get in there and make it work Right, and that yeah. that's kind of a a, a male type energy, whereas got a push know, energy. More, yeah, yeah, that push energy, um, which just burns people out. Yeah, the, the same as the, the leaders who are always pushing, who are always going for it. They're, but not only are they burning themselves out, they're burning their teams out as well, yes. because that energy seeps down into the yeah. whole of the team. So yeah. it's um. There's lots of work to do. There's been fabulous there work done till now, and then there's still lots of work to be done. So the woman you've mentioned, the, the book you just mentioned by Dr. Joanna Harris. Martin. Um, Martin, sorry. That's okay. Joanna <laughs> Harris is a different writer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Um, so would you recommend that men read that too? Uh, actually, yeah, it I would. It's helpful I, for them I to would... understand how women yeah. really work. Because... Because it translates as well. If they can um, just uh, read it and look upon it from... So there's two ways. They can read it and look upon it from a male perspective for themselves. And also they could read it and use it to better understand the female feminine energy. Mm. Because because we're talking about energies. Feminine yeah, energy, so men masculine will have energy. those energies exactly, too. Yeah. Exactly. So there's a mix of both in all of us yeah, at yeah. different le different levels and different degrees so chaps who have a a a best a higher feminine energy percentage will probably understand this better mm. than yeah. a real man's man masculine energy right don't put pink near me it's not my color yeah. you know that kind of thing yeah, yeah. um but uh, yeah, I think it would be really worthwhile everybody reading it. To be honest, mm. but, but and what's what's been your biggest take from that book so far? Uh, the biggest take is about looking after yourself. You can't do anything for anybody or the world if you're not looking after yourself in the first instance. Yeah, and that's really important. That's what helps prevent the burnout. It's that that taking out self care has been kind of bastardized. I think um, people lump self care as uh, anything that they just want to do <laughs> for, for, for themselves, um, 
But self-care is really about um, taking care of yourself energetically and replenishing your soul so there's enough energy to be able to take care of you and do everything you need and then everybody around us. Um, I share this one quite a lot that most most people operate if you've got the glass of your glass is half empty half full right and you look at that at the glass of life majority of people are operating halfway from okay to depleted okay to depleted whereas we all should be operating from okay to fully replenished because it's only re but when we are fully replenished and the glass is overflowing that you the overflow is what you use to help other people oh what a lovely thought yeah hmm. so that's that's the biggest takeaway of everything and it's about that um they talk about it as being the lover energy and it's not just about sex and sexuality that's part of it but it, it's really it's based in self-care and doing what's necessary and needed to look after yourself so that you don't end up in that superwoman burnout type phase mm, okay yeah. cool so i'm gonna ask you this you know putting you on the spot a bit maybe but sure. Hayley, what what would you say are your three top tips for your self-care uh, my self-care is um, having a at least one hour a week where I do something specifically uh, for myself to find joy and replenishment. So that's I've done small things by go and lay in the field and watch the clouds, um, go and somewhere new and read, uh, have a lunch on my own. I've then taken a whole day and I've gone and had my colors done or uh, what else I went to oh I went to the Van Gogh experience on my own and to experience so those are the cut type anything that you use so I I used to really love art I still do but I don't I I hadn't given it a lot of time over for a lot of years so doing anything where I go and look at art or sculpture or anything where I go and stand in nature and experience that that's replenishing to me so the this last weekend Steve and I drove we drove up to Yorkshire we drove around Yorkshire and then we drove home again in three days we've done like 650 miles or ish um over the like yeah it's been phenomenal um I am filled up with joy right now because the scenery was absolutely stunning. So that's that's my the one is the yeah. what I call the self date. Yeah. Right. It's known. It's in. There's a book. Um, the artist's way. It's in there as well, and it's called the artist date. And it's okay. about what happens is is if you're replenishing yourself, that in a creative way it then actually expands your executive brain as well, your executive executive thinking. So it's, you know, there's benefit all round from taking time for yourself. Uh, so that's it. Eating uh, nutritionally, nutritionally well, which I've been doing for uh, quite a number, uh, well, how long have I been doing that? On and off for a couple of years now, I would say I've really taken notice of the nutrition that I put in my body. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's something really important. Um, what was the third thing I was thinking? Having a really good top and tailing your day with really good routine. Something that um, really serves you, sets you up for the day um, and, the, and grounds you. Um, and then at the end of the day, having a routine that eases you into a good night's sleep. Yeah, fabulous. Those are the three things that I would say are the are the top my top my top tip for wonderful. Yeah. Well, Haley, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. I've really as enjoyed usual. This. We seem to have gone all over the place, but yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> that's what life does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you so much so, for inviting me again. You Jamie. are very welcome, Great. and thank you to viewers and listeners for tuning in. And um, I'm going to put all the details of the books that we mentioned in the description. Perfect.
so that you can check them out for yourselves. In the meantime, please do remember to like, subscribe and share with your friends. Till next Take time. Care. Bye. Bye.